My name is Carmen Johnson. A little over a year ago, I read an article on the Internet about women our age who were in seemingly very stable marriages and dreamed of their husbands having an affair. Yes, it sounds strange, I know. This seemed so strange to me that I read the entire article, and that's what ruined my life. The article talked about women who wanted their husbands to take mistresses so that they would have a reason to divorce. In most cases, husbands did not beat or abuse women, they did not cheat on them, they were not alcoholics or addicts. In most cases, everything was fine with the husbands. The women simply stopped loving them. In most cases, women also did not have or did not plan to have an affair. They simply stopped loving the men they married. After reading the article, I was even more shocked because what was described matched my life almost exactly. The more I thought about it, the more it started to fit my situation. It was a word-for-word -word perfect description of my life. My husband, Alan, was fine. He's a truly good person. He is a great provider and an even better father to our daughter, Joy. He is very compassionate and forgiving, and I know he loves me with all his heart. He would be a great best friend, but I miss those feelings for him anymore. I remember when we were first together, there always seemed to be a fire burning between my legs or an itch that only he seemed to be able to soothe. But after 25 years of marriage and 23 years of marriage, I think he's finally gotten over that itch because I don't have those feelings anymore. Don't get me wrong, I still love him. But it's more like loving a brother or cousin. I thought about it for a couple of days and wondered what I should do. I was thinking about this one evening when one of my childhood friends came over to pass the time. Alan got home from work an hour or so ago. He stopped by our home gym to get off the weights, as he put it while he waited for the sun to set. Alan is a runner. Michigan gets so hot in the summer that Alan usually waits until 6.30 or 7 p.m. to go for a run. He kissed me and then went to pound the pavement while I sat down to talk to Patty. He's so sweet, Carmen, she said. I love how after all this time he still loves you. Usually by their age they get tired of their wives and cheat with their secretaries but this man still loves you just as much as he did when you first started dating. Yes, great, I said. I think my tone made it clear to Patty that I was not very enthusiastic about the topic. What's wrong? She asked. Are you really having trouble in paradise? Not really trouble, I said. I grabbed her hand and dragged her to our home office, where I showed her the article. She read it and then looked at me with a smile on her face. So you want Alan to have an affair? she chuckled. Just so you have a reason to divorce him. Honey, you're crazy. Maybe you don't remember what single life was like. The last time you were single, it was that, more than 20 years ago. Believe me, when you were single, it was a completely different time, and you were young and beautiful. You could choose any guy you wanted, and you chose the sweetest, the smartest, with whom you fell in love, got married, and had a child with him. You've won the grand prize, honey. You're on your way to a happy future. If you want to see a life gone bad, try being 48 years old, divorced, living alone and not even dating someone regularly. It will make what you have seem like a fairy tale. I guess the grass is always greener on the other side, I said. The freedom you have seems like it would be really wonderful. You don't have to worry about cooking for anyone but yourself. You can go anywhere any time, with anyone. You're not tied to anyone. Carmen, do you have stones in your head? She asked. If I had to be attached to anyone, it would probably be either George Clooney or your husband, Alan. Alan is a great guy. Of all the husbands we know, he's probably the best. I know that, Patty. I replied sharply. I'm not saying Alan isn't a good guy. He's a very good damn guy, okay? That's not the problem. The problem is that I don't love him anymore. The problem is that every day I'm here feels like fucking torture, and I want to be free. The problem is that I honestly can't go through another night hoping that he won't want to have sex with me. The problem is that I just don't have the courage to ask him for a divorce because he's too nice a guy, and I don't want to hurt him, but I don't like him anymore. When I spoke, my voice rose to a scream. Patty looked amazed in front of me. Her eyes were huge, and her hand covered her mouth. Did I shock you? I asked. I thought that when we've been friends for as long as we have, we can be honest with each other. Patty just sat there and then pointed behind me. 
I turned around and saw my husband Alan standing behind me. He looked like a balloon from which all the air had been sucked out. He had the biggest tears I've ever seen on his cheeks. Then he looked at me. I forgot my iPod, he said. I hate running without music. He turned and went out to run. Why didn't you tell me he was back? I screamed at Patty. I didn't mean to offend him. I was just thinking out loud. With you standing in front of me waving your arms while you screamed about how bored you were, I didn't notice him until it was too late, she said. By then you've already done things. It will take time to fix this, I said. Patty looked at me like I was crazy. This man loves you, Carmen. Did you see how he was injured? I simply nodded my head. My husband, Alan, is one of the strongest people I know. He once ran the last five miles of a marathon with blood pouring out of his shoe. He cut his leg on a piece of metal just over a week before the race. The stitches were removed just two days before. After running over 20 miles, this leg again tore a deep cut during a race. He continued to run step by step in agony, but he finished. I think you don't even understand what you did, Carmen, Patty told me. I really think you read that article and started to feel this way because of what you read. I think you'll end up like one of those stupid women who listen to Oprah and make their marriages much worse than they were. After Patty left, I started thinking about what I would say to Alan when he got home. I felt a deep sense of anxiety. I actually regretted that he overheard what I said. I think I would have expressed myself differently if I had the opportunity. Alan treated me like a gem throughout our time together. He never said a harsh word to me, even when he was angry. He deserved much better. Even if I was going to tell him which I didn't plan to, I would have said it in a much kinder way. About half an hour after Patty left, the house phone rang. I picked up the phone. Hello, Carmen. This is James Peterson. I work with Alan. One of our clients had an emergency with their ventilation system, and since Alan was developing the system, we need him here as soon as possible. I tried to call his cell phone, but the phone goes to voicemail. Do you have it? No, James. He's out for a run. He should be back soon. As soon as he gets there, I'll tell him you called. Thank you, Carmen, he said. Then he hung up. About ten minutes after his call, Alan returned. His eyes were so different compared to how they were when he kissed me when he went for a run. They were dull and lifeless. His smile disappeared, and the easy, comfortable atmosphere we shared with each other also disappeared. He looked at me, not as a man who loved me and lived with me for more than twenty years, but as a stranger. He looked like he was waiting for me to say something. Um, James Peterson called you, I said. I felt like a coward for distracting his attention from our problems, but at that moment I just didn't know what to tell him. I needed more time to think about what I wanted and what to say, hours, until he got home. Our voicemail was empty. I called his cell phone and it rang several times before going to voicemail. I started leaving him a message but didn't really know what to say. There were a few seconds of silence and then I spoke. Alan, honey, it's me. Call me back when you get this. Bye. Alan never called back, and by midday I was panicking. The only time he was gone for so long was a nightmare. He was injured at one of the customer's plants and was hospitalized. I called his office and asked what was going on. His secretary, Sherry, spoke to me. She seemed very cautious and different from her usual self. She was very polite, but spoke to me in her professional voice. I've known her since she first started working and didn't yet know how to operate their phone system. She usually switched me straight to Alan after telling me a joke or telling me to beat him up because they were all rude to her. Sherry, did they handle the emergency? I asked. What emergency are you referring to, Mrs. Johnson? She asked. She called me Mrs. Johnson instead of Carmen, which in itself was a warning. Is Alan there? I asked. He's not in the office right now, she said. Can I take a message? Her answers to my questions were very professional and probably rote. She didn't give me any information. I didn't know if there was something going on at the company or if Alan was just angry at me and asked her to screen his calls. Patty stopped by after work, dying to find out what happened to Alan later. We talked and drank some wine to while away the evening. While we were together, my daughter Joy came and joined us for a while. 
I wondered why my daughter was taking the evening off from her fiancé, but was glad for the company. We drank a few glasses of wine and talked. I noticed that my daughter was watching me. Usually when she came suddenly it meant that she wanted to ask for something. Perhaps she had another expense for the upcoming spring or wanted something that neither she nor her future husband could afford. I was sure she was just being polite until Patty left, and then she would tell me why she was really there. She went upstairs for a while. She came back with several hangers full of things, but I couldn't figure out what exactly was in them. Joy had a lot of clothes still in her closet in her room. She often took piles of her things into the apartment she shared with Ted. As I stood up to refill my glass, I heard her ask Patty, Aunt Patty, what the hell is going on with my mom and dad? I heard them whisper, and when I returned to the room, they stopped talking. Why the hell are you talking about me behind my back? I asked. None of them answered. They just looked at me with that deer-caught-in-the-headlights expression. Well? I asked. I asked Aunt Patty what was going on with you and Dad, Joy said. Honey, nothing's wrong. It's just a misunderstanding, I said. I tried to tell her that, Patty said. I told her that your father just misunderstood some of the things you said. How many ways are there to understand I don't love you anymore? Asked Joy. She suddenly stood up, shaking her head, and prepared to leave. I could tell she was furious. Joy, sit down, honey. Don't leave. Let's try to discuss this, I said. Mom, there's nothing to explain, she said with a smile. It wasn't a very friendly smile. I knew my daughter. She was furious. But she was nice for party's sake. She was so much like her father sometimes. No matter what happened, just put on that happy smile. Come on, Joy, I said. I know you want to say something. Then she exploded. Where the hell is my mother? What did you do to her? Where is the woman who taught me never to do harm, even to strangers or homeless people? Joy, I started. You read some stupid article, not in a medical journal or written by a psychologist. You read it on the internet, and then you offended the best person I know, she said. The sarcasm in her voice and on her face was very clear. So your father told you, huh? I said. I knew he would try to twist it to make me seem like a villain, just because I want to get out. Don't I have a right to be happy too? Mom, Dad didn't tell me anything, she said. I went to his work to ask him to pay for the photo fay for the wedding. Ted and I simply can't afford the prices they're charging us. He said he would be happy to pay for it. But I noticed that something was wrong with him. I stayed a little longer to try to figure out what was going on. I told him I would come here to give him printouts of prices and packages, and we could decide who to hire. He told me it was better to bring them to the office. That meant either he didn't want you to know he was doing it, or he wasn't going to be home. Mom, he looked terrible. I could tell he was really suffering and just trying to put on a brave face for me. I left and stayed in the hallway after Shelley came back to the office. I heard her tell him that his divorce lawyer was on the line. I was shocked but I've seen enough parents get divorced from my friends. The way Shelley talked to him, she was very caring. I could see that she was trying to be his friend and support him in this. I went back and talked to him. I told him I heard them talking and asked what was going on. Do you know what he told me, Mom? She asked. He told you that I... I began. Nothing, Mom, she said. He told me the same tired crap about how it had nothing to do with me, and that both my parents loved me, and that there wasn't always a right or wrong about these things. Sometimes people just change, he said. But mom, when I... I looked at him, barely holding back the quiver in his voice or the tears in his eyes, and I thought, so yeah, I picked up a couple more suits for him to wear to work while I'm here. But I really wanted to take a look at you too. I thought maybe you'd be upset too and we could work it out. But you're sitting here quietly drinking glasses of wine with Aunt Patty while my dad is miserable. So yeah, I asked her what was going on. Now I know and I'm leaving. Mom, I hope you're happy. Dad is still dad. He gives you what you want, just like he has for the last 25 years. But you know what they say. Be careful what you wish for. She headed towards the door. So I'm still a villain, huh? I asked. She turned around and stared at me. What did you expect? She asked. I love you, Mom. Dad told me to remember that. His exact words were, 
she's still your mom, and she loves you too. The problem, mom, is that I just don't like you very much right now. Joy, wait, I said. We need to talk about this. And I want to talk to your father. I don't feel like talking right now, mom, she said. And dad sent you an email. After she and Patty left, I walked over to the computer and logged into my email. It was there among all the spam mail and chain letters. Dear Carmen, the letter began. I always considered the day I met you to be the happiest day of my life. I still think so. What I overheard yesterday hurt me very much, I can't deny it. But despite the pain, I understand that you have the right to express your feelings and act on them. I think when this is all over, I will still be glad that you were in my life as long as you were. You were the ideal wife. You were loving, beautiful, smart, sexy, and the best friend I have ever had. I hope that the next man in your life will have the qualities that I lacked and can bring out all these qualities in you again. What I want most is for you to feel like you can trust me enough to just sit down with me and explain how you feel. I guess that's another thing I missed because I would never force you to stay with me if it made you unhappy. I honestly thought we were happy. As always, I will do my best to give you what you want. I have already told my lawyer to start divorce proceedings. I'm not going to try to be unfair to you. We'll split everything in half, including the house. But if you want to keep the house, we can include that in the agreement. The only thing I insist on is a clean break. I don't want to send you a check every month or something like that. Our attorneys can work out a lump sum payment or other appropriate financial terms. It would be nice if you could spend Saturday with Patty or your friends so I can come and pick up the rest of my things. I would really like it if we could do this at least without involving lawyers. I'll come on Saturday after 9 in the morning. If you're still there, I won't stop. Always remember that I loved you with all my heart and my greatest dream was to grow old together and watch over our grandchildren. Since that probably won't happen, I'd like us to get this over with as quickly as possible and with as little trouble as possible. My lawyer assures me that most divorces don't actually go to trial. We have no custody or child support issues, so all we have to do is agree on finances, sign the papers, and move on. I really enjoyed the past 25 years, but that was probably just my ego. Now it's your turn to enjoy the next 25 years. I hope you find what you are looking for. Love always, Alan. When I read this letter, the first thing that came to my mind was relief. Patty told me several times about how her divorce was filled with hostility. They argued about every little thing for months, dragging out their divorce until it seemed like it took them years to free themselves from each other. Even after it was all over, he continually cheated her out of child support payments until they ran out. They divorced more than ten years ago and both still could not meet each other without a quarrel. However, only I knew the strangest things about their divorce. Greg dated a lot of women, and so did Patty, but neither of them ever settled down with anyone else. More often than not, Greg dated frivolous women, and Patty complained loudly about the types of men she dated. Both were unhappy, and secretly they met several times to have sex. There was no commitment, and they didn't stay together overnight. They just met, had sex, and left without saying a word. I wondered if I would ever become that desperate. But at least Alan's letter let me know he meant to be right, aggravated with me during the divorce. Over the next few weeks, I woke up whenever I wanted and tended to, my garden, although I didn't understand why. The house was on the market and it made me want to cry, but I couldn't help it. I haven't worked for over 20 years. There was no way I could afford a house. If I wanted to keep it, I would have to pay Alan half the price of the house. And besides, I just didn't need such a big place on my own. Most likely, I would end up in an apartment like Patty's. Maybe I would even end up in an apartment in her building. It would be a good idea because then I would have a friend nearby. Patty could be my guide to a carefree single life. A few weeks later, Patty suggested that we rent an apartment together. I told her that I liked the idea, but I was worried that it might interfere with her love life. I didn't want her to feel awkward inviting men home after dating. She just looked at me like I was crazy and said it was worth saving 50% on her rent and expenses. Plus, since I wasn't working, someone would be home during the day to receive her packages, 
and make sure the superintendent didn't go through her things. Less than three months later, my divorce was finalized. Patty and I decided to celebrate. Most evenings we stayed at home, drinking and watching movies. This was my first time out as a single woman. We agreed on different signals so that one of us would know if the other was about to get lucky. We sat at the bar alone most of the night. The only difference to what we did that night was that instead of making our own drinks, the bartender made them and they cost us a lot more. Patty blamed the bar. She said we should have gone to a busier place. I tried to remind her that there were a lot of men there, and I saw them meeting some of the women. It's just that none of them tried to get to know us. Perhaps we created the impression of girls falling in love with each other another, or maybe we just weren't dressed provocatively enough. I've had the feeling for the last few weeks that maybe I really mistreated Alan. I was sure that yesterday was hell for him. I imagined him sitting alone in some crappy little apartment, drinking himself to death. I felt sorry for him. I called Joy, and Ted answered. Once he knew who was calling, he wordlessly handed the phone to Joy. Yes, Mom, Joy said. How is your father? I asked. I know yesterday was probably hard for him. Maybe I should call him and try to cheer him up. Mom, Dad is on a cruise, she said. For a few months, he kept to himself. He bought a nice little house in a very nice community. He did a lot of things to the house. Looks like it's his hobby now or something. Anyway, I think he's gotten over his depression because he looks really good. There is no trace of sadness left. You know, I always thought he was pretty sweet. Anyway, I think he started dating again because when he was shopping, I saw him take two units of most of the goods I bought. So I was wondering, how would you feel about me dating him? She asked. For the first time in months, I felt a surge of emotion. I didn't say anything, but the thought of Patty dating my Alan filled me with anger. I imagined a low-thaving sex and almost lost consciousness from nausea. I have no way to contact him, I said. Sorry. Oh, you don't have to worry about it, she said. Joy will come over to talk about the wedding later. She called earlier. I toyed with the idea, and the more I thought about it, the more I decided that I didn't like it at all. But Patty is my oldest friend, and I didn't want to offend her, so I didn't say anything. My daughter actually came later. We talked about the latest plans for her wedding and when rehearsals would start. I didn't really have much of a say in the planning and felt bad about it. She told me that certain things that happen at some weddings would be excluded from hers to avoid hurting her and my father's feelings. As she told me, I wouldn't have to worry about awkwardness because I wouldn't have to sit next to her dad. I won't have to dance with him either. But I don't mind sitting with your father, I said. And it will only be one dance. Your father isn't a very good dancer anyway. She just looked at me and shook her head. Well, it is, I said. He stepped on my feet so many times, she continued to shake her head. Mom, that's not the point, she said. It was dad who didn't want to dance with you. Dad is a great dancer now but he didn't want Selena to be jealous. My head started hurting at that moment. Who the hell is Selena? I exploded. My speech sounded strange and I felt heat all over my body. It seemed like I could only move one side of my mouth. I tried to stand up so Joy could tell me who Selena was, but my left leg just gave out. After that, everything became blurry. Joy sat me down and called an ambulance. The only thing running through my mind was, who the hell is Selena? I woke up a few hours later with my daughter and Patty sitting next to me. They called a nurse when I came to. The nurse came with the doctor. He examined my eyes and checked my vital signs. He asked me to extend my arms towards him, and I did so. He told me to spank his hands one at a time. I tried to hit him as hard as possible. He treated me like an idiot. Can you say something for me? He asked. He still spoke very slowly. Joy, who the hell is Selena? I asked. She speaks very clearly and well, he said. She has control over her motor skills and speech. She also doesn't have any memory loss, Joy said. She remembered all the places we stayed. Yes, but her blood pressure is rising again, the doctor said. Maybe it's better to talk to her so she can calm down. He went off to do what doctors do, 
and left me with Joy and Patty. Mom, do you remember the cruise that Dad went on a few months ago right after your divorce? Asked Joy. Let me guess. He met some old bitch there and fell in love with her? I replied sharply. Neither Patty nor Joy could believe how angry I was. Mom, if you don't calm down, I'll make them give you a sedative, Joy said. I looked at her and she started talking again. Dad did meet some people on the cruise, but not Selena. He met people from his car club there. It's a group of people of all ages who drive powerful cars like Dad's Mustang. He started doing things with them, going to car shows and making trips. I loved it because it got him out of the house and, more importantly, out of his shell. I don't think you understand how painful it was to sit and watch my father slowly die before my eyes. I'm very calm, I said, and I remember it all. I'm a bad guy. I just threw your dad away like old trash. So how about we get to the point? Anyway, a few weeks after dad started getting involved, Selena showed up at one of the meetings. She had one of those new Camaros. Her husband bought it. He was as much a Camaro fan as dad was a Mustang fan. Her husband died fighting in Iraq. Her uncle was a member of the club and dragged her there to get her out of the house. It took a while, but she and dad started spending time together. She has a son about six or seven. Wherever they went, they took him with her. I think it didn't start out romantic at all. They just did things together. They went to dance classes together, car classes, and picnics. Dad helped with her son's baseball team. She's really nice, Mom, and she's invited to the wedding. She helped a lot with the planning. If you give her a chance, Mom, I think you can become friends. After all, you have nothing to fight about. You didn't want Dad, and although she won't admit it, I think she wants him. I didn't know how to tell Joy that even though I'd never met her, I was already mad at Selena. Over the next two days, the doctors and hospital staff ran many tests on me. I had a very mild stroke. In a few days, I'll be good as new. But they also discovered that I had high blood pressure. I also had a very serious hormonal imbalance. To treat high blood pressure, I will initially take medication. But if I change my diet and exercise more, I might be able to get off the medication. If not, I'll have to take them for the rest of my life. They also started hormone therapy while I was in the hospital. After three days on hormones, my body began to react. I was horny as hell and wanted my husband back. I was supposed to be discharged from the hospital the day before the last rehearsal. Joy's wedding. My seamstress came to the hospital and fitted my dress. After a week in the hospital on hospital food and a low-fat, low-sodium diet, I had already lost several pounds. I asked Joy why her father didn't visit me in the hospital, and she looked at me like I was crazy. Mom, you remember how much you offended him? She asked. We're just lucky that he's coming to the wedding. For a long time, I thought it was going to be either or. What do you mean? I asked. I thought either you would be there or he would be there, she said. But I was sure that I would not have the opportunity to get both of you. Joy, I was never mad at your father, I said. In fact, I never stopped loving him. I wouldn't have a problem if we both attended your wedding. I know this, Mom, she said. Well, I know most of it. It was him. What you said about not loving him anymore and him not turning you on really hurt him. It would be too awkward for him to approach you. Well, I was wrong, I said. What do you mean? She asked. Joy, I still love your father, and I want him back. I can't wait to see him and tell him, I told her. Mom. Don't try to create any nonsense at my wedding, she snapped. If I have to, I'll make them drag your ass out of there. Unlike some of the women in this family, I will only do this once. I met a man with whom I want to spend the rest of my life being creative. Don't you understand, I said. Yes, Mom, she said. I understand. I spent a lot of time talking with Aunt Patty. She told me everything about your life. So, you decided to try to win him back when he finally forgets you and finds his happiness. No, stupid, I smiled. I had a hormonal imbalance. My system was out of order. Over time, it gradually got to the point where I simply had no sexual or romantic desire at all. I was like a robot. Patty and I dated and guys groped me, and it didn't affect me at all. 
They could feel my breasts or do whatever they wanted, but I just didn't react. I just didn't feel anything. But now that I'm on hormone replacement therapy, it's all coming back, I said. Well, Mom, I'm glad it's coming back to you. And it's better than reading this on the Internet and deciding you don't love Dad, but remember my warning. If you bother Dad or Selena, if you ruin my wedding in any way, I will throw you out and never speak to you again. She just shook her head as she walked away. I had a strong opinion that my own daughter did not believe me. I truly believe she thought I was running some kind of scam on her, and I was just bored with the single life and wanted my husband back for the comfort and security he could offer. Patty came later and took me home. She was a little grumpy about having to go and pick up all my prescriptions. Most of the medications I received were temporary. I would only be on them for a month or so. After that, all that's left is hormones and high blood pressure medications. We also had to go shopping for groceries that I needed for my diet. I asked her why she was so upset and she told me. She had not yet been able to find a suitable date for the wedding, and this worried her greatly. For Patty, Joy was the closest thing to a daughter. She held a very important position at the wedding. For this occasion, a professional stylist did her hair and makeup. Why not take advantage of one of your bar meetings? I asked. Carmen, these guys don't want to be around the wedding. Guys our age and older are already married, divorced, or never intend to get married. In any of these cases, neither of them wants to go to the wedding. Guys who don't want to get married think that asking them to go to a wedding is the same as giving them a hint that they don't want to. Guys who are already married have no interest in weddings and are probably worried about someone their wife knows seeing them there with another woman. It will be awkward because even if no one finds out, I will know that I just failed to get a date, she said. But Patty, we date all the time, I said. We could probably get more if we wanted, but we don't go out every night. She looked at me again and tilted her head to the side. Carmen, do you know what a date is? She asked me. It started to piss me off that everyone treated me as if they had touched me on the hid. Of course I know, I snapped. We went there last week, remember? Carmen, she said softly. We don't go on dates, honey. We never do. A date is when a guy who wants to get to know you better invites you somewhere to spend time with you and learn more about you. Sometimes it's dinner or a movie or something else. On a date, a guy tries to impress you so that you become interested in him. We don't go on dates with Carmen. We have sex. I looked at her again and she continued. When a guy asks you out, the main activity is the date. Of course, most guys hope that you'll give them something extra later if you like them and have a good time. But the date is what's important, she said. We meet guys in bars or clubs. They don't pick us up and bring us to their place. They don't spend money on us. And if we leave a bar or party with them, you know there's going to be sex. In short, they are not interested in getting to know us, Carmen. They just want to get laid. Remember when we were young and beautiful and the boys fought for us? Remember how we looked at those women who hung out in bars and basically slept with whoever walked through the door? Now we are one step above them. We're not desperate enough to sleep with just anyone, but we've gotten to the point where we'll give any guy a chance who seems acceptable. Maybe that's what you do, I said, but I will get my husband back. Patty started shaking her head. Good luck, honey. Maybe it's possible because that man loved you, like there was no tomorrow. But Carmen, you hurt him badly with what you said. If he still remembers that, I don't think you have good chances. Have you seen him lately? I shook my head. Carmen, he's as good as new. He's probably running even more because he's lost a few pounds, and he's moving like a young guy. He's always been in shape, so maybe it's just because we're moving slower because we're not like that. He dresses better, too. And he smiles. The day I saw him in the supermarket, he smiled all the time. But I know, Alan, I said. As soon as he knows that I want him back and I explain everything to him, we will talk and put this all behind us. Tomorrow evening, at the wedding rehearsal, our second stage of life together will begin. So what will he say about the guys you went home with or slept with? She asked. It's probably best if we don't mention it, I said. Well, sooner or later it will come up, she said. 
and I think you're wrong about that too. If you don't mention it and he fends out from someone else, he, it could ruin everything for you. You hope you end up getting married again, don't you? Well, yes, I said. We should never have gotten a divorce in the first place. Then you really need to tell him, because if anyone else does it, it'll look like we're a couple of old bitches who are so desperate to get laid that we go out hunting for it. We're actually worse for doing it. Free, she said. Loneliness can be a terrible thing. Patty and I got dressed up for the wedding rehearsal the next day. We went to the church and learned where we would stand and what to do both at the wedding itself and during the reception. A few people were late and we had to either repeat parts or tell them what they would be doing on the day of the event. Another thing that bothered me was when the wedding planner said something like, Okay, after the bride and groom dance together, the next dance is for their parents. Joy told her, We don't do that. Why? Asked the wedding planner. It's tradition. It's cute and it's kind of fun. When you've been together 50 years and watch your wedding video, you'll look more like your mother and father than you do now. Because there's no way my dad will dance with my mom, Joy said. And I wouldn't force him to do that for anything in the world. And I wouldn't do it either, said her fiancé, Ted. You'll never have to worry about that, honey, she said, stroking his face. I think for a moment they forgot that I was standing there. Okay, we'll leave out the parents' dance, the wedding planner told her assistant. Later, I had the opportunity to speak with Joy in private. Joy, where is your father? I asked. Shouldn't he be at the rehearsal too? Don't worry, Mom, she smiled. Dad and I have rehearsed him walking me down the aisle a hundred times, and Selena knows her role too. They went to a car show in Texas. What do you mean she knows her role too? I asked. What is she doing? I don't think I've ever been to a wedding where there was a role for the friend of the father of the bride. Mom, I already warned you not to start any kind of showdown. Joy said. A wedding is all about the bride. It's my day, not yours. You've already had your chance. Selena helps with a lot of things behind the scenes. She helps me secure the veil for the headpiece and the dress and a lot of other things. She'll let them know. When I'm ready, Daddy will walk me down the aisle and start the ceremony. She just takes care of all these little things that you can't do. You know, all those unnoticed things without which the wedding wouldn't go smoothly. Selena is not that kind of person. Who just wants to be noticed and is trying to steal the bride's attention? She just wants to help. Of course, I'm sure everyone will notice her anyway. Have you talked to your father about the dances and the seating arrangements? I asked. I think leaving out the parents' dance was a mistake, and I really don't see a problem sitting next to your dad at the ceremony. I mean, it's just a couple of dances and a few moments of sitting next to each other. Surely your dad wouldn't mind this. Well, Mom, this is not your wedding, she answered sharply. And while I value your opinion, it's my decision. Daddy told me to do whatever I want and he'll do it my way. I love him too much to force him to do something he won't feel comfortable with. Comfortable, so that's how we do it. While we were at rehearsal, Patty noticed a few guys she liked. She decided that the best plan was to meet them at the wedding and she might even dance and sit with one of them. She wanted to look her best, and unlike the bridesmaids, she could wear whatever she wanted. She chose a bright yellow dress that I hadn't seen her wear until her wedding day. I thought it was quite short for someone our age, but I liked the color. I also decided to go all out. If I needed my husband back from this Selena woman, I was going to need it. I'm sure Selena is no more attractive than me. I used my pedometer to determine this. I asked Ted what I looked like. He made a face and said that I looked pretty good for a woman my age. Then I asked him what Selena looked like, and he looked like he'd been punched in the stomach. He said she looked, um, okay. I could tell he was trying to be diplomatic, so I was sure that I was at least as attractive as her, and possibly more attractive. This got me thinking. She had a baby. So perhaps her hips widened and her breasts sagged. She also obviously but she was the type of boy, since Alan met her at his car club. No one described her as anything other than cute. So once Alan sees me in all my glory, I don't think I'll have much trouble winning him back. 
I went to Patty's stylist and got my hair done the day before the wedding. I made a makeup appointment the same day as Patty and bought myself a really nice dress. It wasn't as short as Patty's, but it was bright pink, so it stood out, but wasn't as flashy or loud as Patty's yellow dress. The wedding day arrived, and I was excited. Patty and I did our makeup and went to church. Everyone looked at us as we got out of the car and entered the church. I looked at the dresses of most of the guests and decided that ours were much better. They stood out, just like a mother of the bride should. People kept smiling at me when they saw me. Some of them were dressed so modestly and soberly that they seemed to be going to a funeral. One woman was handing out programs or something like that at the entrance to the church. She was beautiful, but she had absolutely no idea how to dress for a wedding. She wasn't even wearing a dress. She was wearing a suit. The suit fit perfectly. The top and blouse showed that she had nice breasts, but was completely covered so no cleavage was visible. The skirt was tight and showed off her figure and went to mid-calf with a small slit. It emphasized her long legs without showing anything too much. She had really beautiful brown hair and big green eyes. She was about 30 or 35 years old, so I assumed she was probably a relative of the groom who was helping. She handed me a program as I walked in and told me she liked my dress. She said the same thing to Patty, and we both smiled at each other. She was a sweet girl, Patty said. Yes, she really is, I agreed. When Patty and I walked into the church, it seemed like every head there turned to look at us. Patty looked around for one of the guys she saw at rehearsal. We sat together for a while until Patty jumped up and started waving when she spotted one of the guys she was waiting for. She stopped waving when she noticed he wasn't alone. That bastard is married, Patty spat. I stood up to get some water to drink my medicine and noticed the woman at the door was still waiting after everyone had sat down. I smiled at her and asked why she hadn't come in yet. She told me she was waiting for her date. He was late. Men, I said. They always either rush us or make us wait. Yeah, but this one is definitely worth the wait, she said. As she said this, her smile grew a little wider. I wonder if my face was this smooth when I was her age. And I wonder if my emotions were as clear and easy to read. This girl was in love. There was no doubt about it. As soon as I returned to the church, the page boy came for me. He brought me and Patty further hell to the church to the room where Joy was getting dressed. As I walked by, I heard someone whispering about two old bitches in clown dresses and bright makeup. I was furious. I was hoping to see them. I would fight them back. How dare they create a performance on my daughter's wedding day? When Joy walked into the room, I was amazed. She looked radiant. Her headdress was already secured and her veil was raised. All she had to do was put it down. Whatever Selena is, she did a great job. Mom, what are you wearing? Joy asked sharply. And you too, Aunt Patty. Why did you do that? What have we done? I asked. Patty shrugged. Somewhere in the back of my mind, it started to dawn on me. Joy wore a very soft white dress with pale peach accents, trim, and veil. Her bridesmaids were also very sophisticated. Their dresses were peach-colored with white trim, a perfect contrast to Joy's dress. Patty and I chose colors that were so bright they were almost garish. Mom, just sit somewhere in the back, please, Joy said. Maybe between the wedding and the reception you can go home and change into something you can wear in church. Instead of going to the front where we were sitting before, we ended up taking seats in the very back row. With every row of people we passed, people looked at us from under their eyelids. They were too polite to just stare at us. But before we got to the back, I felt like we were in a candy store because of all the giggles. It could have been worse, Patty said. We could be two old bitches in clown dresses. Damn it, Patty, I said. We are those two old bitches. Then things got worse. It was a warm spring day, so the door to the church was open. Suddenly, I realized who they were waiting for. I heard the roar of the exhaust system of Alan's Mustang. Hell, you'd think he could find a way to make this thing queeter for the wedding. I looked out the back door and saw him getting out of the car. He really looked good. He looked incredible. His hair was cut shorter, and he seemed to have stopped dyeing it. He wore his gray hair short. It suited him very well. I told you, 
Patty said, noticing me watching him approach the church. I smiled so hard that my lipstick was on my ears. I heard Alan walking up the steps to the church and my smile widened. I couldn't wait for him to see me. Before he entered the room, I turned back and looked ahead. I didn't want it to seem obvious that I was looking for him. I needed to act calmly. But the thing is, after all this time with my hormones out of balance, now that they were normal, my panties were almost wet. Alan and I weren't going on a date after we got married. It would definitely be casual sex and he would definitely get it tonight. Another thing that interested me was that Alan came alone. Then I started wondering why the hell he hadn't come in yet. I heard a sound from the hallway. It felt like a slap on the flesh. It didn't sound strong enough to cause damage, more like a playful action. This was followed by a very feminine voice. Oh, you better stop. Patty and I looked at each other, wondering what was going on. We looked back and saw Alan finally enter the church. A woman in a skirt suit followed him as he walked towards Joy to escort her. My smile completely disappeared when I noticed that the woman was rubbing her butt with one hand and holding my husband's hand tightly with the other. If her smile was incredible when she talked about her date earlier, now her face lit up the room. All I could do was sit depressed, my smile gone and my face gloomy. A few moments later, she came in and signaled to the organist, who began to play the wedding march. She sat in the very front row on the opposite side of where I was supposed to sit. After some time, Alan appeared, escorting Joy to the altar. The ceremony itself was wonderful. I cried several times. One or two of them were even related to the ceremony. After the ceremony, things got worse. Joy decided to take some photos at the church. Patty suggested taking one photo of the bride and her mother. Everyone decided it was a good idea. Neither Joy nor the photographer liked it. The contrast between Joy's exquisite wedding dress and my colorful outfit was too great. Alan said something to Selena and she took off her jacket and handed it to me. She simply took off her jacket and handed it over. Her smile didn't change. She was clearly willing to do anything to make my husband happy. It reminded me of how he always treated me. I'm not a big woman at all, but I couldn't even fit my hand into her jacket. Although she was slightly taller than me, she was thin. The photographer took several photos of Alan and Joy together, and one photo of Alan and Selena together. This made me extremely angry. Finally, at Patty's urging, the photographer took one photo of Joy and me together. I pressed myself close to her and pressed my face to her cheek. I asked the photographer to take a close-up. This way the color of my dress wouldn't really show. I was going to burn this dress as soon as I got home. He took the photo, and as I moved away from Joy, I heard everyone around me gasping. I looked at Joy and noticed a large smudge of my makeup on her cheek. Joy looked around and asked what was going on. Someone handed her a mirror, and she sighed too. Don't worry, Selena said. I'll fix it. Let's go back. It'll only take a minute. Joy rolled her eyes at me and followed Selena. I decided this would be a good time to talk to Alan. At first I was nervous, but then I gathered my will and turned around to find that he was gone. He was on the other side of the church, telling people to go to the reception hall. He told them to drive slowly so they could get used to leaving later because there was an open bar and he was sure half of them would be drunk later. The thing that stood out the most was how happy he seemed. Patty asked me if I was ready to go to the appointment or if I just wanted to go home. All three guys she was following came with dates. Two were here with their wives, and Philip, the only single one among them, came with a plump woman who held his hand as if she were underwater and he was an air hose. Patty was at least as depressed as I was. I can't believe he chose the fat one over me, she muttered. It seems we were both masochists because we went to the appointment anyway. Patty was sure that after they got drunk, we could start relationships with some guys. The reception was an incredible party. The band was very versatile and played both modern hits and old standards. I was amazed when Alan and Selena took to the dance floor and practically performed. I would have dropped dead if I tried to walk. Patty came over and covered my mouth. Joy, when did your father learn to dance like that? asked Skyla. He and Selena took dance classes together, she said. He asked me several times to go to classes with him, I replied. Maybe you should have done that, Mom, she said. They look like they're having fun. Yes, I said. It really seems like it. 
During dinner, I became even more depressed listening to the conversations. Ted and Joy were going on a cruise. Looks like my husband and Selena made the same trip. It was full of suggestions about what they should do and beware of. After the newlyweds left, I stayed to drink and watch the dancing continue. It was depressing, so depressing that I didn't even realize what was happening until it happened. I didn't want to leave without talking to you, he said. I looked up and saw Alan standing behind me. I tried to smile and ran through what I wanted to tell him in my head. This was my chance. I even had papers about my medical condition in my purse. So if he doesn't believe me, I could prove it. I'll just tell him that I've always loved him, and that the only reason I believed that stupid article was because of my hormone imbalance. I didn't mean anything I said, and could we please go back to the way things were? Before you start saying, I told you so, let me speak, he said. I smiled and nodded. Now I understand, he began. When this first happened, I wanted to die. I've loved you most of my life. I just wasn't ready for life without you. I wished so many times that I just hadn't gone back to the house for my iPod, then nothing would have happened. It didn't work out that way. You and I would probably still be married. Wouldn't that be great? I said. No need to be sarcastic, he said. I knew you'd feel this way. That's why I never wanted to talk to you. I'm trying to thank you here. Anyway, at first I just wanted to die. I didn't go anywhere, didn't talk to anyone. All I wanted you to come to me and say that it was a mistake and you want me back. Then I started hearing rumors around town about you and Patty running into bars and sleeping with a bunch of guys. At first it was like a mule's hoof in the face. I even met a couple of guys who claimed you went home with them and got busy having sex with them the first night we met. I was really furious, but after a while I think I realized I was just jealous. After all, I married you and we have a child together but you kept me waiting weeks before anything happened. He shrugged. Suddenly, I realized a lot of things. I realized that you and I had changed a lot in the last 25 years. Maybe the problem wasn't you, but me. There were just things you wanted to do and try that. I didn't. Was and wasn't ready. You wanted to get out and look for more sex, more variety, and try different men and so on. I was getting ready to interrupt him and tell him that this was not what I wanted at all. He was not describing his wife, but an accessible girl. Let me finish, he said. You also knew that I was just not ready for this. I loved you so much that the thought of you with someone else would have killed me. Or the core I would kill them. And maybe you too. But you needed it so much that you did the honorable thing. Instead of cheating on me and cuckolding me like those sad guys on the internet, you made the right choice and we got divorced. Then, as a free woman, you could go out and spread your legs. That is. Develop and accept your new life. Like I said, I was bitter for a long time. Even after the divorce, I kept hoping that you would come back. After some time, I realized that even if you came back, nothing would work out between us. In the end, after everything what you did, I just could never accept that a simple, ordinary me could ever be enough for someone like you. And that's what I need, Carmen. I'm a one-woman man, and I need a woman who only wants to be mine. We would never be happy together again. Then I looked at the last few years of our life together. I know you talked about how unhappy you were, and I finally saw that I was unhappy too. I needed someone who was willing to go out and run with me, someone who would share at least some of my interests. When I met Selena, it was like a fog rising. We are perfect for each other. I'm going to spend the rest of my life with her, even though she has terrible taste in cars. And I never would have met her, if you weren't smart enough to know and brave enough to admit that we were both unhappy. Now we're both happy. You with your new free, sexually liberated lifestyle. And me. With my soulmate. So I just wanted to say thank you. Before I could say anything. Before I could tell him he was wrong. She was there. She snatched the glass from his hands before he could take a sip. We don't drink alcohol, honey. We exercise. She reminded him. Did I hear my name mentioned? I was just telling Carmen about your terrible taste in cars, he smiled. Oh, honey, she began. The only difference between your car and mine is about $10,000 and that little horse on the front. Yeah, you paid them an extra $10,000 and still didn't get a horse or horsepower. Plus, you can't see anything from it, he chuckled. I see you, and that's enough for me. 
she said admiringly. I think I felt bad. Even when she spoke to me, she still held his hand. She extended her free hand to me for a handshake. I'm Selena, she said. Selena Johnson, I told you he was worth the wait. Lena, this is Carmen, Alan said. My ex-wife, and Joy's mother. Selena smiled and patted me on the shoulder as if we were old friends. Oh God, she said laughing. Then you already know how special he is. And your daughter is a wonderful girl. Good for you for raising her like that. I can see where she gets her personality from. She was not at all embarrassed by me and did not feel intimidated. She still held his hand tightly, as if he belonged to her even through this. Did you say your name is Selena Johnson? Patty asked from behind me. I was still Madolvanoy and my brain was not functioning. Selena smiled and showed us a large diamond ring. We got married in Texas, she said. But we didn't say anything because we didn't want to distract from Joy's big day. She doesn't need attention distracting from her moment. We old people need to give the young ones their chancy to shine. And how old are you, if it's not a secret? I asked. Thirty-five, she replied sweetly. It was really nice to finally meet you, Carmen, she said. Maybe you and Patty can come to our house for a barbecue when the kids get back from their honeymoon. It'll be a small get-together because our house is nice, but not that big. Maybe we'll do it just for the seven of us, newlyweds, you and I, you two, and our son. I'll ask Joy to call you and tell you the date when she will call me from the ship. Is Joy going to call you from the ship? I asked. We talk every day, she said. At first, she just wanted to make sure I treated her dad well, but it turned into something more. I watched as they walked away hugging each other, and there was nothing I could do but sit in a depressed mood. Patty took my hand and led me back to the car. When I got home, I looked at every website I could find to find the article that started my life going downhill. Surprisingly, I could find links and mentions of it, but could not find the article itself. I also couldn't find the author's name. I was going to keep searching until I found her. Nothing ever disappears from the internet. And when I find her, I'm going to sue this girl for ruining my life. On the other hand, life moves on, and I have no choice but to continue living. Much to my chagrin, Alan and Selena are so happy together that it kills me to see them together. As much as I wanted to hate her for being smart enough to pick up and cherish what I threw away, I couldn't. She makes Alan much happier than I ever could. But I wouldn't be human if I didn't take my chance. Unknown to Alan, I sat down and had a serious talk with Selena, which gave me a lot. I explained to her how I felt towards him and even told her about my medical condition and how it led to the mistake I made. I know it sounds stupid, but Selena is so damn sweet that I thought maybe we could all sit down and talk about the situation like adults. This was the first time I saw her lose her composure and get angry. She made it very clear to me that she was very sorry for the pain I went through, and she accepted that what happened to me was not entirely my fault. She said that given that, there was simply no way she would give Alan away, and, pregnant or not, she would beat me up if I ever mentioned it again. Things have been a little tense for a while, and we haven't had as many Johnson girls meetings. I could tell Selena was really angry with me. But she finally called me and invited me and Patty to a barbecue. When I arrived, she really apologized to me. I told her it was my fault for what I suggested, but she said it was her fault for how she reacted. We hugged and both felt better. Little did I know that later I would feel even better. Sitting in front of their small but beautiful pool and admiring the work they had done with the landscaping, Selena walked up behind me. She introduced me as her sister in spirit, which I guess is not the same as her sister-in-law, to the man standing with her. He turned out to be her widower uncle, and we have been dating ever since. He's a little older than me, but very sweet. Of course, he's not Alan, but I didn't expect that. We have a lot in common, including our high blood pressure and mutual aversion to exercise of any kind. We'll someday babysit Alan and Selena's kids while they go off to run marathons and attend car shows. Our sexual appetites are also similar. Unlike Alan, he doesn't try to jump on me every night. And when we do, 
It's not a frantic, passionate union, but a calmer, slower fusion. This is a plus, in my opinion. All things taken into account, I ended up, although not where I wanted, but much happier than I deserve. But for all of you women my age who are in a good marriage or a marriage that could be good with a little effort, remember two things. First of all, Oprah and all self-help gurus are the devil. And secondly, the opposite of good is better. I'm still looking for the author of that damn article. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.